So back when I was a kid and I was learning to paddle canoe, I was really enthusiastic. And when I wasn't actually at the canoe club, getting coached, paddling on the water, um, you know, working uh, actually with coaches on the water, I'd be at home thinking about paddling. And one of the things that I did was I cut out all the newspaper pictures that I could find of the top paddlers, all the magazine pictures. And bear in mind, the Olympics were in Canada in 1976, so there was a lot of material to cut out. And what I would do, and I, I did this instinctively, no one told me to do this, it was just because I was an enthusiastic kid. I would take all the pictures of the paddlers in the catch position, and I would array them beside me over here, and all the pictures of the paddlers in the middle of the pole position and I would arrange them over here and then I would take all the pictures of the paddlers as they were finishing their stroke at the exit and I'd put them over there and I get them I get them arrayed in front of me in front of the full-length mirror at my parents house and I take a broom and I would the broom stick is about the same length as my canoe paddle shaft and I would get into position that I saw the paddlers in in the pictures. So if it was the catch position, I'd look at the pictures of the paddlers all stretched out at the catch, and I'd try to get into the same exact position I saw the paddlers in. I would look at the pictures, I would look at myself in the mirror, and then I'd look at the pictures again, and I'd make sure that the picture, the, the, the positioning was exactly the same as I saw in the pictures. And then I would do it from a different angle. I'd get the, have the mirror over there, I'd look at the pictures, I'd get into position, I'd look at myself in the mirror and check to see that my positioning was exactly the same as I saw in the top athletes in the pictures, right? And with the broom, the bristles in the broom give a little bit when I lean on them, so I could even, when I was in position, I could even get the bristles to sort of give a bit as I lean my weight on them, and then I could even make the broom stick flex a little bit as I put some pressure on it. So not only was I getting in the right position, but I was actually able to sort of teach my muscles what it felt like in the right position. I could feel the connection between the broom on the carpet and I could feel that connection up my arm, down my back, into the center of my body, into the hips that I wanted to be pulling with in my canoe. So I do all of that with regards to the catch. And then I'd move on to the next set of photos, which was the middle of the pole. And so here, it was more right kind of here, the middle of the pole, and where my hips had gone from being forward like this at the catch to back. So I'd use my hips to pull and I would practice being in this position. And again, I would look at the pictures and I would look at myself in the mirror and I'd try to mimic as closely as possible the positions that I saw in the pictures. And then lastly, I would do the same for the exit. And what I found was that doing this really helped me learn quickly on the water. Um, water's a dynamic environment. Uh, uh, you put your paddle in the water, the board or the canoe or whatever you're paddling moves out from underneath you really quickly because a little bit of pressure in the blade makes the craft move forward. Um, the other thing, balance is an issue. But when you're on land, you can, you can you know, lean on the paddle, or in this case the broom, and feel what you can't feel in the water as easily because the craft is moving. And then, of course, you don't, you're not balance challenged because the land is very stable, so you can really precisely get in the right positions. And what I found was that by getting in these positions on land, I could really easily find them on the water, even though the craft was moving, even though there was a bit of a balance issue. And that helped me learn the technique, uh, the, the good technique for canoe so much easier, so much more quickly. Because what I found was if you can find these three positions in a canoe, you, your body's intelligent enough to connect the dots between them. And you end up having a very good technique. Years later, when I started doing stand-up paddling, I wanted to figure out how to paddle stand-up, right? Like I, I look at myself as a paddling technician. I was very meticulous about how I paddled canoe. I wanted to do the same thing with my stand-up paddling. I wanted to learn how to have a really good technique. And I found that I learned to paddle better, more quickly, um, by doing land drills similar to this um, for, uh, for stand-up paddling. 
And over the years, as my understanding of stand-up paddling grew, um, I was able to refine these drills to the point where I think that they're really effective. Um, they've helped me be a better technician in stand-up paddling, and they've helped countless other people that I've worked with be better um, technicians um, in stand-up paddling as well. So over the next several weeks, um, I want to share these drills with you. And, um, and we'll start with drills for the catch, we'll move on to drills for the pole, and we'll finish with drills to the exit. And I'm certain that if you try them, they'll help you as well. So stay tuned for uh, land drills to help your paddling technique.